McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! All right, we are starting this video up in three, two, one. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number five of this Edmonton Oilers franchise mode, triple franchise mode, whatever you want to call it. We are coming off a Stanley Cup championship with this absolutely stacked Oilers team. Now that I look at it, like it is a good team, man. Holy. Okay. So lots of potential in this team. Lots to look forward to. We got a draft coming up. We are going to have the dead last pick in this draft, I believe. I believe. Um, so new salary cap, all that stuff. Just got to get through it. And then we can actually take a look at the oh, lottery. Okay. Um, so yeah, I forgot we had Buffalo's pick, to be honest. Um, but one team behind us does actually move up there if you take a look at the Florida Panthers. Uh, but the Ottawa Senators win the lottery with the number one pick. St. Louis moves uh, up one, sorry, from three to two. Florida moves up eight from 11 to three. And uh, we move down one with that Buffalo pick. But to be honest, I'm happy with the seventh overall pick. That's a really great pick still. And, well, nothing to complain about, man. Like, we got the seventh pick. Yeah, seventh. So lots of players to choose from, select from here. By the looks of it, there's at least two, maybe three or four elites that we can choose from. I'm obviously not going to be taking one of these high top sixes. That just doesn't make sense, especially when there's defenders around that look a lot more promising. As far as winger uh, forwards go, this Marcus Nold, man, you know, you know what? We could... Potentially have a full German line here going because shoots is freaking good. Dry sidle is amazing. And then if we got a guy like Marcus Nold here too, that might be a better option than going with a guy like Stan Wong or I think this Angelo Ramsey might also be an elite. But we don't have any scouting reports on him. So we can't make a uh, an executive decision on that. And I'm honestly not going to take a risk on him because we don't know if he's if he's a top four and we take him at seventh. That would be one of the worst. Like, that'd be an Edmonton draft bust. That'd be like an Neil Yakupov right there. Um, maybe not as bad, but still pretty, pretty bad. Taking a look at all the retirees. Patrick Marlowe, Marion Hossa, Jason Spezza, Ryan Kessler. And then as far as tendies go, pretty much nobody I know. Anyways, so... Patrick Marlowe does become a coach. Uh, Andy Green, Franz Nielsen, and Brad Richardson all become scouts. And we get a couple retiring coaches here. Uh, none of them are Edmonton coaches, so that is good to see. Taking a look at the draft class, we do want to hit the interviews here quickly just to kind of figure out who these players are, what they, uh, what they have to offer, what they bring to the table, that kind of thing. So... We're going to ask this guy a bunch of questions. Okay, so what are your strengths? So he's probably a two-way defenseman by the looks of it. If his skating is up there, as far as his play style goes, I want to know his readiness right away. At least a few seasons. Okay, so he is probably not the player. So he's, never mind, he's a defensive defenseman. With a two to three year ETA, Angelo Ramsey is not our guy at number seven. No way, no way. I'm sorry. And yeah, he's. I think he's gonna be an elite, but just yeah, no, no way, no way. When there's guys like Stan Wong, and Marcus Nold that are NHL ready. If you look at like Josh Roy, even Larue and Cylinder, I would prefer just not to go there. Um. So yeah, Atu Rati going to be going to the Ottawa Senators. That's exciting for them, I would think. Um, besides that, who else do we really have pinned or ready to go here? Uh, Philman, maybe. He's a possibility, but I don't know where our picks are landing. Um, Vika, or 
Yeah, Vico as well is a possibility. Looking at low elites, Zykov and Jackamobs. Yeah, Jackamobs is going to be good. Got a low top four, got a couple starters in here. A lot of Russian starters. And Pet Petrka or Petrka, I don't know how you say it. Petrka. So, editing the trade block just before the draft. Um, honestly, I don't really want to touch any of this. Uh, yeah, no, our, our team is just fine where it is. I would like uh, Sergei Chubarov to grow. He would be an awesome fit with this team, especially with the skill and talent this team possesses. We do have two seconds. I don't believe, yeah, we have no third round pick this year. So that's something we got to keep our uh, eyes on. Because two seconds is going to be kind of our main playing cards here after our lottery pick, obviously. So, uh, no surprise there with Ratti going first. Kong, holy crap. St. Louis, you lucky guys. Oh, 84 rated. That's insane. Fletcher, only a 79. Trevor Wong, only a 76. And then some not so good picks there, man. Vancouver wants to trade the tenth. Okay. So there is a possibility that we could land multiple elites here. Um, I'm gonna not hesitate. We're taking Marcus Nold. I think he has to be our best option here because the cycle and pinch. Does not fit our system at all, unfortunately. And, well, to be honest, I'd rather take the forward depth. So, I'm going to take Marcus Nold now. We're going to see who goes at picks. Um, the next two picks here, pretty much. Uh, 77 rated. That's not great. Oh, we messed up. We messed up. 80 rated Stan Long. Oh, well, that hurts. But we got the German connection, so yeah, oh well. Kind of messed up on that one, but it happens. So we're going to sim all the way to pick number 60 now. Take a look at the remainder of that first round. That 77 hurts when there is an 80 right beside him. Man, oh well, whatever, it happens. Besides these guys, I mean, there's a lot of good players in this first round. Like, holy crap. This this draft never fails to disappoint. The 2021 draft is always a solid year. I have to say, Zykov went there. 42nd. Ah. And, well, there really wasn't a lot of other players there besides that. Um, I'm going to go with this guy, Connor Punet. We know literally nothing about him, but if he's an elite, that's a steal. He's a uh, medium six. Nice. <coughs> oh, man. That was pretty bad. Heikinen, we could go after him. Actually, oh, I know Brent Clark's an elite. And there is Zykov right there, but I think we have to go with Brent Clark just for the elite potential, even if he's only 55 rated or whatever he is. I think we have to take him into the second there, man. Like, there's, yeah, there's no way we can pass up on that opportunity for a solid defenseman. So we're simming right through round three, over to round four. I'm sure we missed some players there without having a pick in this round. And Sword we knew was a... Oh, no, Henrik Lack. Nice tendy there, going to the LA Kings. Lennox, 59 rated medium starter. Zigomanis, or Zigomanis, I don't know how you say it, but he's a medium top four. Nice player there as well, man. There's some. There's been some good players throughout this draft. Have to say, like, it's not disappointed. So, I think we're going to go with Andronov, just because medium starter, he's guaranteed. 
I know he's only five foot eleven, but you know what? We'll take value over height. I guess that's what we're doing. Do we have another pick in this fourth round? Is that what I just saw? I guess so. And Kern was a low elite, of course. Of course. So, you know, slightly poor picking here on my part. There's a lot of good players in this draft, and I'm honestly missing a lot of them. I get the feeling Jackamov is going to be a low or a medium nine, but you know what? Worth the risk. If he actually is a medium six grinder, I would be happy. He's a medium nine grinder, so whatever and last pick of the fifth round see this is the problem with winning the cup is you have really late picks all the time and then when you make a pick you have to go all the way back i'm complaining about nothing we just won the stanley cup uh, <laughs> we're gonna take hedekin here i don't think there's any other players to really uh debate over at this point we'll just take hedekin because we know he's a guaranteed low four defender and what rating was he? Because that's the interesting part of this. 54, not bad. Okay, so over to pick 168 now. I think we are going to take that uh, Vico, or Vico, or what's his name? Vico, something like that. Um, he looked like a pretty solid player, and he's got a 50% chance of being an elite. So why not? So Matty Vico, he's supposed to go a pick 200 on the dot. We will take the risk and probably not get rewarded, but you never know. Yeah, no, bottom or medium bottom six forward. Nice. And, well, we didn't really miss out on a lot. <laughs> this seventh round was absolutely garbage. Wow. Talk about a weak second half of the draft. The first half of that draft was really solid. I was happy with it. But, yeah, not not nearly as much talent coming into the league after, after that draft for sure. So, I think the winners out of that entire draft are going to have to be the Winnipeg, or not the Winnipeg Jets, the... Uh, St. Louis Blues. We got a medium fringe starter there in Glebov at the end of the draft, but I would say our steal of the draft is probably going to be Brant Clark at 62, but not a terrible draft overall. I'm fairly happy with how that went. Obviously, last year's draft went a lot better, but, you know, we, we got to build on each year. It's not always going to be um like one of those years where it's like oh that was the year of the draft where we just absolutely like everything went right no that was uh that was two years ago and we got chubasov out of the lottery and we got uh what's his name shoots from the canadians for trading up that was just that was massive made a big difference in our team as you can see by the sixth cup the oilers are now holding in this franchise mode and, well, we got to defend it for the upcoming season. So just signing and making sure everybody that was part of this cup winning team is going to stay a part of this cup winning team. We might lose a piece or two. I get the feeling Hopkins might be a bit of a sore spot for us here as far as keeping players go. But we're going to worry about that when we get there. As of right now... All these scouts should be looking to re-sign. I don't see why they wouldn't. And Tyler Benson, Stuart Skinner. Hopkins is still the player that I'm worried about. And yeah, as you can see there, he feels there are too many players in his position. I would say, I would think that's what his problem is right now. Uh, Tyler Benson looks absolutely phenomenal. 85 rated man. See that? That's the difference between the low and the medium there on the uh, potentials. I think we have enough money to sign Hopkins, do we? I think we do. So we're going to sign Stuart Skinner up. He wants a two-year, but we're going to give him like a lot more money. Um, Dylan Wells is not that great. I was hoping he'd be a little bit better. So uh, I think we're just going to let all Olivier Rodrigue fill up that backup spot. We are spending $11 million on our attendees right now. That's fairly expensive, and that's going to need to change by the time Chubasov's ready to sign. How much money does Hopkins want? You know what? 
you know what? That's not even a bad deal. If we could get Hopkins for six and a half for four years, I would be absolutely astounded with that contract. That is awesome. If he does sign that, I don't expect him to, but if he does, if, if he does, I would be very happy. Chase on. Oh man, you're not worth that much. You're going to decline so heavily over the next year. We all know that's going to happen. Like, oh, that's crappy. Uh, what about Marodi? Okay, Cooper Marodi is one of the players who actually understands our system. Thank you. Like, doesn't understand. Oh, I'm going to be probably not as good a player as I just was because, you know, we won the Stanley Cup and all that stuff. Like, no, like, Chase on's not thinking that way, but other guys are. Like,. Oh, that's just that's annoying to watch but it happens like you just gotta just gotta deal with it when it comes to contracts juju Kara, you're not worth that much money man you're worth like man i don't <laughs> uh, you hate to see that because you know he can still fit in the system and can still play Marcus Nold is probably going to get a year in the AHL just to really hone his skills in and become the NHL caliber player that we drafted him to be. Because right now, I don't think he's fitting the system. Uh, as far as rating goes, we will find out about everything else when we get there again. But there's a lot of really small contracts in here that we got assigned for the AHL and so on. How is Broberg not grown, man? Come on. Like, is he really struggling that much? Is that what's going on right now? Or, like, what's the deal? He's an eighth overall pick, and to be honest, he's looking like more of a bust than anything right now. Uh, Schumacher looks really good. I believe his, his name is Shannon. <laughs> So I'm not going to ask questions on that one, but, uh, yeah. I don't even know, like, half of these players or where they came from. It's like, oh, you're in my team. You're in my team. I don't know who you are, but okay. Like, <laughs> okay, Chase on at 5.6 million, man, is going to be too much. That's just what I'm seeing right now. Um, Adam Larson, we have to re-sign. He fits the system too darn well to not re-sign. And two years at 4.6 should get the deal done. Besides that, we're letting Star A and Wells walk to create room for these other players. And Alex Chason is too god damn expensive right now so guys i'm pretty sure every single one of our coaches and pretty much every single one of our scouts is going to resign adam larson resigns nuge does not take the money kara wants more money archibald signs yurcho signs cave signs benson signs he big signs mantha signs Skinner also signs, uh, Yamamoto signs, Pearson signs, Logan Day signs, Cooper Marody signs, Marcus Nold, Berglund, Niamalainen, I don't know how you say it, Schumacher, and I mean, if Ryan Nugent Hopkins is not re-signing, which is a problem, unfortunately, it, it's a problem, um, you know what we're going to do with Chase on, is we're going to offer him one year at five and a half and if he actually performs up to that level fair like we'll offer him another big contract but he's a medium or he's an exact top nine so i don't see him going anywhere and yeah that's just that's too much too much money for more than a year um as far as nugent hopkins goes can we go two years at seven million and see if he signs that because, I mean, I know a lot of people go, oh, Nuge isn't worth that kind of money. I think he is, okay? I'm a long-time Oilers fan, so if I think Nuge is worth that much money, he's worth that much money. And we're it, it's, it's my franchise mode, okay? So you guys can say whatever you want, but Nuge does resign. Chase on resigns on that one-year deal. So we're going to send him to free agency now. 
and uh, I don't think we're really going to be picking up a lot of players in free agency, but... As you can see by our depth charts, our center and our defense are currently our strongest positions. We do possibly need some more left wingers, but I don't really think so. Okay, so as of right now in the off season, we're going to check out the free agents, but we got like 1 million in cap space. We have nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing to pursue players with. It's more just like uh, when you walk into a store and you're just looking that's that's pretty much what we're doing right now we're just looking so yeah like our team is better off as is i'm not worried i think our team's actually quite set to perform at the same level they did last year i don't know i mean i would hope 50 wins could be in the equation for this upcoming year because of how freaking good this lineup is um but you never know like it it changes every year and overall this team is i don't know if i'd say star studded but there's definitely a couple stars in this lineup as far as 98 98 rated Connor mcdavid goes i don't know if you can get to a higher rating than that. That is the highest rating I have ever seen in NHL. I've never seen anybody in franchise mode hit a 99. The only way I think he would do it is if he scored, one, scored over 100 points again, and then two, we won the cup with him scoring 35 to 40 points in the playoffs. That's the only way I would see that happening. But, I mean, these last three years... The plus minus is the thing I think I'm most impressed about out of the way those guys played. Like that plus minus is just, it's fabulous. I haven't seen, Mc, like if we go and look at McDavid and Dreisaitl for their entire careers, that is like the highest their plus minus has been in a long time, man. Like since 2016, 17, when they went on that playoff run, that's the last time that they've been on that level of playing that well with that few. Like, look at Dreisaitl, man. He's never had even close to a double-digit uh, positive season for plus-minus, and he did this last year, which is fabulous. So this team is pretty much set to... I don't know if I want to say set to do a repeat yet, but um, I don't think there's many better teams in the league right now than this current team that we are rostering. So we're just going to hold on to everything, just see how it goes. And, well, I mean, maybe we'll look to make one trade for a pick again because, you know, so far our pick trading has been quite good. We're heading into 2020. Two, is it? 2022? So, I mean, like an Arizona pick would be one of those picks that you want to pursue. They are worthwhile. They'll probably end up getting you a better prospect than anybody thought. And honestly, it's not going to cost you that much either to land a pick like that. So, you can try to throw like a Punenovs in there. Uh, or like, well, Ryan McLeod's actually pretty decent, so I could try Pudanovs. And they don't want that deal, even though it's quite close to fair value, which, you know, it's actually understandable because we are a team that over the last couple years has had a bit of a history of ripping other teams off when it comes to picks. So let's try Pudanovs and Hedekin here. I mean, Hedekin, yeah, we just drafted him, but whatever. If it means we get a first-rounder that could actually land in the lottery i will take that <laughs> so we're gonna make that trade now and then we're gonna go to the next season and we're gonna see how things go so at the end of the season ticket drive 92 percent of our tickets sold 
pretty high up there, I have to say. Um, so I was honestly expecting a little bit more, to be honest. But our goal is to win the Stanley Cup, win the President's Trophy, and win our regular season home openers. Pretty straightforward as far as goals go. Let's check out the lineups. You know, that first line is freaking... Oh my god. Like, that is a little bit scary, actually, how good that first line is. We could go... Oh, oh, see, that's... That's the difference right there, is Chase on just, like... He could go a full line of franchises, but that's just... That's a little stupid. It's a little bit dumb. Okay, so as far as the Edmonton Oilers go, guys, this is how we are going to be running the lineups. We got Dreisaitl, McDavid, Chase on. Just an absolutely stellar line. Put up some absolutely insane points last year. And Chase on almost had a career high, man. He was just off, but he was plus 22, which is highest in his career easily. Um, second line, we're going to go with Chubasov, Hopkins, and Benson. Again, very well-rounded line. Um, all those guys fit the second line well. I don't know how they don't have three chemistry. Maybe if I move Nuge like, to right wing, that's the only thing I could think of. But like, it, it, it's not going to make a difference, I don't think. So the only difference there is the little rating boost. So technically, Connor McDavid's 101 overall rated. Um Technically, Dreisaitl's 99 rated, but that's with the line chemistry boost. Remember that. Chase on's 87, technically. Um, technically. We're going to try Rudolph Schutz, even though he's a left winger. We're going to try Rudolph Schutz on center for the third line, because as you can see down in the bottom left corner, he has 78 face-offs, which, believe it or not, is actually higher rated than Nugent Hopkins. Is higher rated than Cooper Marodi, and these guys are centers. Remember that. Is higher rated than is the same rating as Sam Gagne's, but still, just like really, is that really how this works? Like, and then bottom line, I don't know if it's so much a grinder line. It's still a good line. Like, there's some skill, there's some speed for sure on it, and uh, I mean, yeah, this is this is gonna be a good line no matter what. So everybody from the third line, well, not quite. I was going to say from the third line up, but I realized Chase Hunt's a Dallas drafted player. We have nine out of our 12 forwards are Edmonton drafted. And I mean, if you look in the AHL, we got a lot more coming here as far as Ryan McLeod, as far as Marcus Nold, as far as Shannon Schumacher. There's a lot of good players in here still that, again, we are just getting started with. On the defensive end, now this is probably the craziest thing that I have seen or heard, and I think the reason why there's a plus five boost here, yes, Larson fits it perfectly, but like, um, what's his name there? Evan Bouchard does not fit poorly either. He's just off from the perfect line there. And I think the reason why there's a plus five boost versus if I move Clef on there, it's only a plus three is based on their player types. And when we look at it, Clefbaum is a two-way defenseman, Larson's a defensive defenseman, but Bouchard is an offensive defenseman. So if I go like this and put Bouchard there, it's plus five. If I do the same thing here, Hamannick, honestly, I see Hamannick and, um, and Larson as almost the exact same type of players here. Defensive, defensive, right? And they both have the, uh, the shoot balance there or balanced and shoot, so if I switch them, there's no rating or chemistry change. So I think that chemistry is partially based on player types. So now if we add in that plus 5 to their ratings, we have an 89 rated Evan Bouchard and an 88 rated Adam Larson. On the uh, second line, 85-83 is better than most teams can show on their second pairing. And then third pairing, 283s with Jones and Nurse is honestly absolutely ridiculous how good they are every single defender here is a top four nobody's a top two no one's a top six it is absolutely stacked this lineup i have to say and then robin laner in goal we've got no issues with him he had a spectacular year last year put up 34 
uh, one of his highest career years there, second highest to be exact, and uh, had a very solid save percentage as well. Not a 924 or 929 in New York was probably the best of his entire career, but uh, yeah, no, he's seeing a lot of shots, and that's just what you expect. You expect good numbers from him, and he's putting them up. As far as the backup goes, 6'7", Miko Koskinen. Yes, he's 33, but I'm, I don't see any issues in that. Like, what's the problem there? I, I don't see it. So that is our team for now. If we go and look at the special teams, I don't think we really need to change all that much when it comes to special teams. Maybe we go McDavid on the point, Dreisaitl taking the face off, something like that. But, uh, you know, the more I look at it, the more I realize Dreisaitl just doesn't fit that uh, that system at all. Maybe we go chase on in front instead. I think that might be a slightly better fit. Yeah, okay, so that's how our first pairing's, or our first pairing, our first unit's going to look. And then as far as the second unit goes, um, I don't see a lot of room for improvement on here. Okay, um, as far as all our players go, we could throw... Try throwing shoots on there, see how he does. Um, that looks better already. And then pull Yarvi. They're really not looking great on the power play, maybe. So let's try. Who else could be good on the power play? Marodi, maybe? Oh, well, that's better. That is certainly better. And, uh,. Go like that. There's no change. Okay, so I mean a one and a zero. I don't think we're gonna get much better than that on the power plays. Um yeah, we should still be able to score. We got dry saddle McDavid on there. Yeah, yeah, no, that'll be just fine. I think that'll be quite good, actually. We could throw shoots on the top line, see how the German connection goes there on the power play. Okay, dry sidle and shoots. I would love to see that a couple times during the year. I think we're going to leave all this the same. That looks pretty solid. Maybe we go dry sidle for McDavid. It doesn't really change anything. And then plus three on the first penalty killing unit. Holy. What if we go like this? Nope. Chubasov fits. He's going to kill penalties like a beast. That's that's the reason why I like two-way forwards is because, I mean, especially as a franchise, is that they can do literally everything. Like, he's going to kill penalties like nobody else. He's going to have the best PK numbers in the league, probably. As far as captains go, we've seen all this before. Dry Settle, Nuge, McDavid. And, well, do we have any new players coming in? Um, I don't believe so. I believe number three is retired. That's why, yeah, that's why Jones is number five. And, I mean, honestly, this team is set to go. They are ready for the 2021-22 season. I am looking forward to playing with this team. They are going to be filthy, just like last year. And I will end this episode off once I have simmed to the regular season, finished my scouting on the draft class, and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Okay, so guys, to end off this episode, we are going to take a quick peek at the draft class, where looks like it's just elites this year. No franchise players, which, you know, that's not a that's not a big deal. That's a good thing, probably. Because <laughs> uh, you know how much I like to pursue franchise players. But, uh, you know, Shane Wright's in there. Matt Savoie. There's some good players in here, man. Anyways, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Let's just take a quick look at how the team actually 
is looking here. Uh, 96 offense, 89 defense, and 86 goaltending. It's got to be some of the best offense in the league, man. Like, you can't have McDavid and Dreisaitl's franchise players and not be one of the best offenses in the league. So, yeah, lots to look forward to in this Edmonton Oilers franchise mode. That's going to be it for me. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. I know it's a bit of a restart from the beginning of the season, but I'm having way more fun with this team than I did with our previous Oilers team. Everything's just clicking right now, and we'll see if we can potentially repeat with the Stanley Cup in the next two episodes or so. So that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!